great to see everyone here. These are the Coffee House chats. We are recording this. If you see that big old bear, uh, his name is Craig in the Discord, that means you are being recorded. Uh, everyone is welcome to join in the discussion as we get going. Today we're joined uh, by Martin and Zonka. I'll let them introduce themselves in a minute. And we're just going to talk about DSI. These guys started a group called Blockchain for Science uh, in the mid teens. Uh, and they tried to put together a blockchain for science community <laughs> in the mid-teens where there probably wasn't enough sort of push behind it yet. But DSI wasn't even a term at the time. Uh, so we've got a lot of experience on the DSI space here. Uh, this is a great place to ask questions about the early sort of rumblings of why people thought they could use DLT to make science better or apparently build Dyson spheres. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about before we started here. So. That said, uh, I'll remind everyone we get together every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern right here on the SCURF Discord to talk about research that SCURF is highlighting. So there are a bunch of posts on SCURF having to do with DSI. Uh, I'll share them in the chat at some point. Um, and that's that. So Martin Zonko, welcome. Go ahead and choose who's going to go first and tell us who you are. I can go first. Uh, so thanks for having us here. That's that's really awesome that this group is coming together and, and that this topic is being discussed here. Um, so I, I give you a bit of my, a bit of my background. I've, I've studied uh, molecular biology, biochemistry, and I've been doing then research too long, basically. That means I, I didn't uh, drop out or there wasn't an opportunity for that uh, as, as then came up uh, until my postdoc. Um, and at this time, um, you know, it, 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 it happened that I started to be quite frustrated at the uh, interface of uh, moving on from, from doing research as a postdoc and looking for a faculty position. And I felt like, oh my God, I really, I've seen so many like terrible things in academia at this time. I really don't want to switch sides. And isn't there something better we could do? And, and that's how I, uh, uh, one night in the lab, googled blockchain and science because it became a thing among the neuroscientists at the time, 2016. They started to drop out research and uh, join something with blockchain. And so I said, man, after reading a bit about it, there must be something. And that's, uh, I hand over to Zönke because that's when Zönke came into this. So we basically have both a track record of being a scientist working in the lab. I'm like on medical imaging side. And I, but I was like one step before blockchain and Web3. There were friends of mine who basically helped constructing the Web 2.0 for science. So there was a time when the internet for science was like downloading papers from a library server. That's it. <laughs> there was no chatting, no Twitter, no Web 2.0. And then like my friends and a lot of other groups, like 15 other groups came up with the idea, let's have a social network for science, right? So at this time, like social network was not even a term. This was a place to share like drunk party pictures. But then like it was like almost the same time when Facebook came to Europe. So they basically decided, let's have a social network for scientists. And we thought like we could fix everything in science with a social network, right? Have like people be more truthful, more open, have them putting papers up there and everything. And I basically worked with them on some ideas. It's called ResearchGate. Uh, well, is it a good, will we come to, to this later? Like good things turn bad things, right? This is like <laughs> what's happening. And, and like vice versa, right? So, okay, well, so they, they founded ResearchGate and we had like this hope of like fixing everything, yeah? People be more open, have their constant data and everything. And Bill Gates threw some money at it. Like Bill Gates, he's like a tech nerd. And he realized, so why can't you just like download publicly funded research papers? So we need to fix this. So he put like 80 million out of his private pocket money at ResearchGate to fix it. Well, fast forward a few years, ResearchGate, what did ResearchGate really drive, right? So basically let's let's take this to like later discuss on like what DSI can do differently. Let's start there because I think that's great. That was the like the, the same experience that I had getting into DSI. And anyone else here who works in DSI, um, feel free to share your story on how you got into it. But I saw uh, blockchain technology, and then I was like, "This is cool! New nation-state currency is way to manipulate and and make sovereign nations outside of of, of governments." 
And I was like, oh, that's neat. And then I saw this one cryptocurrency that focuses purely on science. Like, oh, my God, we're going to change the world. We're going to fix everything. Yeah. Everything is yeah. going to be exactly. better and exactly. open. And yeah. no one's going to yeah. doubt yeah, scientists so, anymore. So why, in your opinion, didn't work it out? It didn't. I mean, we are still, we still have the publishers, I mean, right? Yeah. So, we're, we're still yeah. nascent. Like, I think the space is still young enough. Like, I, okay. <laughs> I'm still naive enough to think that we are going to achieve all the goals. But after your story right there, like, oh, man. I think yeah. maybe we should step back in the space and look at practically the issues that we can solve. Yeah, and yeah. but it's like that's why Martin and me we sort of like are excited and we think like okay, we called the project blockchain for science. We did like a conference and meetups, but if we always had in our back, hey, what's different in this science revolution? We have the value change, right? There's like a way how we redistribute money. And blockchain is about transferring value. And let's discuss this later or develop this together. So we, we got in contact and there's like the idea of timestamping research data, create yeah. tokens for reviews. And it's all, these are all great ideas, right? But fundamentally, I think in the design, that's why we are still excited. Even if it, then even, even it's no longer called blockchain for science or blockchain for research, it's called design now. It doesn't matter. Because the same the same value proposition still holds true, and I think there's like fundamentally something different in this science revolution if the community works together for for this time, right? This is like but what that's, what that to define yeah, okay. this. Yeah, let's define yeah. this one. So that, is it the third one? Like I'd 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 like to make a claim. So we had the first one, and that might have been like the web, right? When the web came up and okay. was used for, yeah. as yeah. a yeah as a tool uh, actually to facilitate research and research proposals at CERN, right? It's something I always like to, I'm quite fascinated exactly. when you see the Tim Berners-Lee's uh, proposal, how, how, how that should have changed. And, and what happened afterwards is that, you know, the JSTOR story, um, that, that basically I think there was a, a need to finance the, you know, uh, digitization of, of the libraries and the whole you know how do we share uh, papers in a digital format and and unfortunately that then turned out to be the business model and 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 then when the open science movement came and the ideas of research gate came to connect social networks of scientists i mean that might have been already the second one um and, yeah, and then the, the yeah. revolution yeah and then the third F2. one 0, was, yeah, yeah. was basically this wave of of people but I'd be careful to call it really like a big revolution because it was rather uh, crazy <laughs> nerds like us uh, that, that 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 were um, at the intersection of 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 this blockchain wave 2016 to 18 uh, and and science and and realize there is something about it and as Zunke mentioned there's this timestamping of research data which which. Uh, you know, um, the idea of lab books that are notarizing uh, yeah. research data on the blockchain. Um, and, and with this, the ability to, to, to more quickly share research because uh, there's this, this idea here that a scientific paper is the currency of scientists. And, and this remains until today. And this is why the monopoly of paper or publishers is there. And yeah, we, if, you, if you could break this down, if you could make it into smaller research items that are that are stored in such a way on the blockchain that you are not losing your prior uh, priority on the on the on the finding basically you might be able to share it earlier that that was actually the idea that we had and i think many people in 2016 uh, 17 ah, right okay if you if you can timestamp it on the blockchain associate your name with it you still That's, have the novelty on it you have exactly, a trail of data yeah. You have like micro publications. You collect them, put them together, and like have them. Have one That's how we came to it. Yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. Have the, still have the data trail, and like the moment you you have a, a data set or a result, you timestamp it on the blockchain, and later you refer in the final paper to the timestamp. Right, and maybe result. we were actually yeah. just talking about this in a, in another DSI community. And this is why I love this space because these conversations happen everywhere all the time. Like you yeah. can even, if, if I publish data that ends up being used to create a translated product that produces income for someone, yeah. through that data providence trail, like I could actually get paid for it, even though I produced yeah. the foundational data. So like could Einstein, if we succeed in developing this, get paid by the by Verizon because he produced the general theory of relativity, which is used to make cell phones work essentially. 
Like you would be able to trace that data all the way back and trickle down some some income to that foundational, that basic researcher. That would be so yeah. fun. That that is a cool Actually, way yeah. of doing it and looking yeah. at it. But yeah. But we we can there like more effects to this, like rippling down with data, with drug discovery, like which results in this animal led to this like cure, right? This would be something Jonathan, you just said it, right? The Einstein example, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So but it would make science also like how would you how would we get like the question at our whole community or it's like our group now and the whole DSI community is like how would we get scientists to like publish in in a timestamp ways with micro publications that would lead to like one big publication. I mean, we all agree that this is like better than just like using your Excel table and then publish at some point one paper, right? Nobody knows whether you think. I think. It, but yeah, yeah. How, how 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 would we get the scientists to like do this? Like one I think way it actually. Print, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. So one way would one way you just described is like. Um, it's like uh, incentivizing them to economic benefits, for example. Yeah, like you just like described it. Like Verizon gets like pays like Einstein for like fixing their cell phones or GPS because of general rel relativity, right? But like in, in in basic research, how would we get scientists to like work this way? I, I think it goes to the difference between the uh, our era and the current era, the blockchains for science versus DSI. The, the current world seems to work a lot on tokens and smart contracts. When uh, we were working a lot with blockchains and blockchains mint a currency and then distribute it somewhere, they're not working in a closed model. So if we had an incentive layer in a blockchain that just minted a currency and gave it to impactful publications on the basic okay. research level, you might incentivize uh, researchers and scientists to publish at that level, even if they have a novel result or their their publication is cool. like a preprint. Yeah, so we, we come up with sort of guidelines how to distribute research money. So that we want yeah, to incentivize Yeah, that's exactly people. what it research money. It's a currency based on science. It would be so neat. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this would so, be so, so I have like Go a ahead, real quick, like genuine question here. Like, so in some ways that is actually one of the problems that, um, currently exists in academia is the idea of the least publishable unit like so you take a really big research project and you try to break it up into little tiny units because people are already incentivized to while they're not getting research money directly for their publications you're going to pad your cv as much so what might otherwise have been a very thoughtful holistic and a thorough individual paper is now fragmented across several different types of journals. Uh, they don't really kind of get linked back together other than citations. So like, I'm not entirely certain if this like fixes that problem. You're right. So um, I think there are two phenomena here, right? And and it's 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 not like one zero really. What you mentioned, Paul. Uh, so for example, you do have this incentive to 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 break things down and publish them in many small items obviously and then on the other hand you do have also the like the the need uh, of maybe these high impact publications that that, that 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 do it differently at least in the biological sciences what happens often is, uh, because in both ways uh, the paper is the yeah. currency for the scientist that that he needs to exchange for 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 grant money and for having a life actually and and that's a big problem i see anyways in in science um uh at the current stage and it's, i'd love to discuss also what we could do against it uh and look at einstein by the way because like einstein or another example is franz kafka i like these two einstein worked in a patent office to have peace of mind and to work on his uh uh theories while he had a very boring job where he earned his income uh, and Franz Kafka, uh, he he was a lawyer, and 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 he's very famous now for for the books he wrote, right? So uh, the the passion of the people and the and the way the, the where the income comes from is uh, in some exceptional cases uh, actually not as not, not the same. And and what we have now is we have these professional scientists. That is, you start having a career in science as you have a career in politics somehow, and. You learn, your trade is, write these papers and depending on the funding scheme you're on, write, break your work down in many small ones. Or another nice way is pile as many data as you can on top and then 
pull out the things that you could make a story out of. You know, that's a very yeah. sad way of doing uh, like yeah. cherry picking research data. Um, yeah. So, but I, I, I know that I put up a big challenge here because, and, and we open this in two different directions here, because if I, like, if you want to self, solve the problem of how to sustain the scientists and not becoming corrupt, <laughs> and the other one, yeah. how to incentivize to have micro publications, those are two different problems. But, but right now they are compounded in this paper yeah. grant uh, cycle, you know. Exactly. And we still, we still think, like, Martin, you, you're running into this problem. Because you are you're taking like some things of the old world, fix one thing, and then uh, then, ah, yeah, and yeah. then then leave other things out. So why don't like the DSI communities comes up with a guideline for future scientists? Have like one page of your personal research work you are working on and updating it. It's a constant publication that's so constantly updated, and then link it to smaller micro publications, and will incentivize you with like doing this. Right, this would like sort of fix it. Don't think on like time wise publication last year, this yeah, year. Exactly. You just like have one dynamic publication changes to it at the blockchain timestamp, right? And you distribute like in certain ways and incentivize micro publications, but they're referred by this big publication. And you can like take time snapshots of this, like in your data in your code base, and like use it as time stamped very with nice pictures and everything publications, but they're all referred to this one big research project, right? If if, yeah, we, this, if we would have something like that, we wouldn't run, to, run into this dilemma, right? Mark? I think you, yeah? you bring up a, a big point, and I see photos on mute, so photos just a second, but the, the idea that changing just one of these legacy problems, like approaching it as fixing a legacy problem isn't really, doesn't seem like it's the way to go. The way to go is to rebuild the entire system from the ground up. And, and, exactly. And, Zonka, some of the tools you're describing actually are being built in the DSI space right now. I've seen more than one example cool. of, of this type cool. of thing. So it is, it's exciting to, <laughs> to hear you describing something that I'm watching being built firsthand uh, without you knowing that it's a thing that's being built. It's like, I'm watching someone awesome. build the thing that we need. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah so, okay, sorry, sorry. I, I, and I don't want to discourage you. And Martin and me, we discussed in preparing this like too being built something in the web 2.0 world, there were like similar things out, but we couldn't reach like people to use it, right? It wasn't used because like, what's the fundamental reason why people didn't use it? Because there was like no incentive structure for that, right? We didn't there have the money like, manipulation. They didn't have the way to control exactly, incentives exactly, that we do now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's so, different now. So, the, so this is like the beauty of the DSI revolution in science. Yeah, exactly. so Martin, so, go ahead and then photos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, so exactly. So it is, it, it, there's a, there was a, 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 actually 2018 or so in, in Berlin, uh, Zünke and me looking down at an empty parking lot. And I said, Zünke, you know, here we are going to build like this new blockchain for science research institute, you know, and, uh, and, and it's why? It's still empty, the parking lot. <laughs> and the parking lot is still empty. <laughs> but there were other people uh, in the meantime that, that, that did uh, um, make maybe this um, and, and look at, for example, like the Astera Institute, right, which is to me a really good example of like changing the incentive structure by by like creating an institute and, and saying, OK, and, and in our institute, we don't t tell me if I'm wrong. I haven't followed up a lot, but they're also building their own way of publishing their data and, and communicating it, as, as I understood. And that's a big change. And this is exactly uh, the, the change in incentive structures that we that we hope that DSI is bringing to, that we can decide where the money goes. And um, there's not only money to build the tools and the excitement around this, but also we have a convincing argument for the people, for scientists to 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 adopt those tools. Yeah. I'll stop yeah. here and I think Fotis, yeah. Yeah, Fotis, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. As uh, mentioned, there is this thing that's being built already that's applying a lot of what you've talked about, uh, Mark. Uh, it's called Disai Labs. As, uh, yeah, cool, cool. It's like, uh, it's like, yeah, they're building this. They have this uh, philosophy of research objects, which can be composable, and you can build on top of each other, and they can all go on chain. So uh, you can have a trackable history and evolution of how this um, research project actually comes to life. It's very, it is not just about um, just tracking credit, just tracking uh, what has been done to 
uh, give credit to a scientist or about intellectual property, it brings forth whole new ways of looking at how you research and what it means. Uh, and I think this is the um, most um, yeah. exciting thing about DSI, that there's this opportunity to do things in a completely different way. And we should just go all in on this uh, on the alternatives. And what yeah. I wanted to also cool. bring up is this this um, this issue of SORM short term and very very incremental uh, research that is mostly being done so that it, there there can be a um, big sufficiently big in order to get funding. And like with with this like money manipulation and and new media for science, um, we can start looking at the long termism of research like because there's it seems like the ambitious projects of the past the macaulay's for instance or bores of the past uh, um, are not really here now for some reason and it has to a lot of with the incentive structures of science right now so very exciting some of my thoughts on that uh, reflection on necessity is this topic worth the, the lack of those those people and uh and I want to come back also to this point of the uh, the idea of like slicing things, uh, salami slicing uh, research. This is a phenomenon that definitely does occur, and we see oh we can make two or three papers out of this finding. Great, let's 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 write these two or three papers. Of course, that happens. But I've also experienced the other the other way around that people are holding back their data just too long, and that to me is rather the problem. Um, to, because you you can have a great finding, and let's call this a research object. That this shouldn't be a, a paper. I think a research object could be something as a, a, as a single observation. Um, but but people keep this observation for too long, and this bothered me myself a lot because I thought, oh man, if I could only share this finding, I might find in an open call as we are here today. I might find uh, in other forums. I might find people that are working on exactly the same, or have seen it somewhere else, and I would be more than happy. Because most of, of my interest is to, to solve my question. And, and it's so painful then to know that actually, no, I can't talk to anyone because especially in the biological sciences, you are not want to be, you don't want to be scooped and, and then you know, have no yeah. career because no paper or not the high impact paper. Because unfortunately, you want a faculty position. You also need the big papers, you know, and the, yeah. the slicing is... You know, um, yeah. something that is not always the way to yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the in the dream design world, you would just like timestamp your results. You would communicate it to them, and you would give would become rewarded by like communicating it to the community. And there there wouldn't be a thing like having a nature publication or the necessity, right? Yeah. This would be the perfect maybe world. Michael. Yeah. Uh, so Michael yeah. Nielsen's yeah. book, uh, Reinventing Discovery, he describes that in a chapter. Um, and again, yeah. I also want to emphasize that not everything, because that was a long time before Web3 and so and, and blockchain, not all, yeah. any, uh, all, many of these things that we need and these mechanisms can be built without a blockchain, you know, or uh, that, yeah. that's also something we keep in mind. But definitely, they just need to be tools, they need to be built, and there are important ways where then as time stamping and so on, uh, where these time relevant transactions come into play, then then you need it also. Yeah. yeah? And for the economics, yeah. of course. Yeah. For the yeah, for the is, value uh, transfer. Yeah. Absolutely. So and, imagine, and Eugene, I uh, go go ahead. Zonka, go. No, you you go ahead. Well well Eugene's okay. unmuted, so I, I wanna let him come in really quick. And I, I just to summarize really quick, you've hit on a couple topics here. One being like researchers don't want to go after the the unsexy research. They only want to find that that very important research that will get them the faculty position. So they're not even sometimes interested in doing what might be considered a boring research uh, project. And at the same time, how do we, you also brought up, how do we bring in uh, these researchers into this new system we want to build? So that's a, another very interesting question I hope we come back to. But Eugene, I'm sure you got a thought here. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a couple of things there and funny uh, plugging on the Michael Nielsen um, reinventing discovery book, just because uh, a few of us at SCURF started a non-SCURF activity of kind of an open science uh, reading group slash discussion group. And that was the first group that first book that we just read through. Uh, so just a quick side thing for anyone who wants to be part of such a group, just DM me and let me know and I'll loop you in. But to actually comment, and it's interesting to think of you know, as uh, as DSI Labs was mentioned, uh, and I'm sure the, the DSI Labs folks uh, love that it was a non-DSI Labs person who plugged uh, DSI Labs there. 
Uh, but we do have a few folks from that team here. So do feel free to jump in and kind of mention uh, your tool and what you're building in the context of what's being discussed. But I also think it's interesting to think of, right, there's sort of the, the literal architecture of the science and to allow for more of the ongoing uh, things and not to just make it as a, a pure milestone or terminal driven of a sprint to PDF and then move on to the next PDF. But it's also interesting to think of uh, just to plug some other tools like the proposal inverter, uh, which a few folks from Curve Labs and PrimeDAO have come together to kind of work on to make it easier to have transparent and joint uh, funding rounds for research and to start setting up more for uh, hyper certificates or impact certificates, which I know is a topic that both DSI Labs and Protocol Labs and a bunch of others are thinking about uh, retroactive funding and how does that get enabled, technically speaking. Um, and also to mention the Block Science Labs group, I guess a lot of labs groups working on cool stuff, but the Block Science Labs product where they're trying to effectively create a notion for the actual research narrative. So this is more of the place where you can keep track of your idea from the point of inception of like, hey, I have a thing that I kind of want to explore as research. And it's kind of like a research diary that can uh, over time both include uh, like actual uh, Jupyter Lab notebooks for running code on the spot, but can also be this place of building the narrative alongside something like the DSI Labs infrastructure and then using something like the proposal inverter to actually fund the research. And it's cool to see these different kind of tools coming up. Uh, and a specific question I would have for, for kind of anyone in the, in the chat right now is right even let's just say that come january 1st 2023 we have all of the quote unquote perfect tools to rebuild science from the bottom up um what now right that that, so that doesn't mean any of the actual relevant scientists are going to start using it or that uh, for them the incentives change even if there are alternative incentives starting to come up so i wonder how much y'all think about like the cultural side of this problem and what are the things that people can chip away at especially for those who might be listening to this either now or in the future and like hey I'm not a dev, I can't build the future of science products or tech stack, like how do I actually contribute to changing science in a more open direction? Uh, so yeah, just wondering what, what people think about the cultural challenges there. I've got a response. If you got it's Zongo Martin, if you wanna go first. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, so with the that last part particularly uh, is something I'm pretty passionate about. It's getting people who are not scientists involved in the scientific system, getting them uh, giving them a pathway to participate in building the things that they use in their everyday life, right? Because the the true, the ultimate stakeholder of science is the general public because, you know, a scientist creates the car and the public has to deal with car crashes. You, you, so you, you have to get them involved in the system. And I think we can build the tools that actually let us do that. Distributed computing is a great example of one of the tools that brings the public into the scientific production process. Uh, and we can build it even more. So giving public uh, some some sort of stake in maybe the funding process of some science, some stake in the decision-making process, uh, some stake in the sort of, I'm using air quotes here, we can't see, uh, intellectual property process, because I don't think IP should be a thing anymore, uh, but letting the public decide how some of science operates while also giving the majority of the stake to the producers of, of science, so the scientists, the researchers, et cetera, and then maybe giving funders and, and capital institutions a small portion of the, the stake, which is very different than what exists right now. I yeah. think that if, mm -hmm. if we can get the public into the system, ultimately, to summarize that, you, you change your culture. You completely change how science looks to the public. Yeah. yeah. Although, like, you know, I do have slightly... Um, like looking at the, the history of this whole process, maybe slightly different view on it. So um, I, 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 uh, one of the things from what I said before is in my short term memory stuck and fits very well is this generational, generational change and shift that we need and we are observing. And I believe it happens now. COVID was a great accelerator. So at the time when we presented this, and I went also to present to Marie Curie Fellow, uh, which is like a big European grant uh, that many scientists receive and so on, I presented these crazy ideas, NFTs for science and all of this, and, and you know, uh, crypto kitties and, and, and what's IPFS and all these things. The only people that came to me after the talk that didn't shake their head and went out and said, but this is all bullshit. I, I, I am a successful scientist because I am, <laughs> you know? The only ones that came were the ones that were like the younger students and the postdocs. Or the, and, and one person that told me that, that she got like deprived of a research project and, and, and this kind of tools would have been great for her. Yeah. 
And now after COVID, it seems that many people are wondering, well, should I really do a postdoc? Isn't there something else? And I think that's that's where we can involve more people. There's one thing, a caveat I have is that I don't what I don't like this uh, when we say everyone can be a scientist. Everyone that wants to be a scientist can be a scientist, um, but but not everyone has to be. You know that's a pressure I don't like on the people that we can do anything. But what I like what you said is um, that we can involve the public more actively. For example, through um, funding uh, impact certificates, having a more um, transparency in the system. You know. Yeah. Um, but not say but again be careful because actually uh especially in the US the, the funding systems in my opinion are quite nice uh, quite open uh, you can find very interesting focus research groups that are being fun uh, where there's a lot of money for for really crazy ideas and projects um but obviously that's not enough you know we could do yeah. much more so what if we took these things that are already working but give them more funding Example, um, and then I stop, ERC, the European Research uh, uh, Council, and, and their ERC grant is a very, very good system. It's just that they can only fund 2 or 3% of the people that are applying, but they could have easily money for 20% of the people applying, you know, and that's, that's very sad. Uh, so, yeah, we need, we need to get more funding in the system. Yeah. And, 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 and the citizens that are interested coming to science, so to say, are not biased regarding the science culture, right? So they are open. Yeah. So, but so the, 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 to the generation. But, yeah. Exactly. But and they would be open to use the DSI tools, for example, right? And especially so if they get money for that, right? So if you do it, if you use a public, what, what did you call it? it like a publication in water or like a grant in the curtain, retroactive, good funding. But I, I would say the same. Yeah, exactly. It's a good idea. Yeah. So say, I, I would say the same would apply to the established scientists. The very moment they get the right, they get research money uh, from, let's say, from a DAO. If the requirement is, the only requirement is to use like, a, let's say, a, a, a dynamic micro publication with timestamps on the blockchain. As, as soon as they get like, let's say, 150,000 for their little pet project, uh, from a DAO XYZ, but they have to use like micro publications like on IPFS, they will do it, right? So they will do it. So I, I, I would say the same way we could like the same that applies to citizen scientists in like creating a new science culture, we could do the same um, through like redirecting research money that is distributed through DSI, for example, to DAOs in the right way to like scientists, established scientists. We need to like talk about how much they can use traditional systems as well. Let's say if you apply like for a research project in this and this DAO, XYZ DAO, you need to like, you can publish in established journals, not to extensive open access fees. If you have your one PDF publication after two years, we are okay with it. But you also have to timestamp your research results, publish it on IPFS, have it decentralized, have it open for retroactive good funding and everything like that. I, I think we could like really as a DSI community could really change even established science structures because I mean, if they, if, imagine there's a scientist at Harvard, they are all about money, right? They do everything. They write long grant proposals that nobody reads, like 30 pages, beautiful PowerPoint presentations with everything. You know, what scientists do for crap work, like signaling and like cargo cult, uh, they do a lot of prep things to like just get research money because they have to. They would also use IPFS if they get like 200K for their next project, right? And we, have, we would have them in the detail world, right? Do, don't you agree? Yeah, definitely. Chris, I see you coming off here. I, just to, to respond, yeah. right, like I, I think it will... Um... You're basically saying give them money. It's the same thing that the U.S. government yeah. did with their funding structures. Like, if you want to give exactly. public taxpayer money, money, you have to open access your results. So it's, I think, exactly. it's That's absolutely on exactly. It, exactly. So in 2023, when all the term how tools are available, we should like just include them into the requirement of some DAOs. <laughs> so you, if you want to have money for this for this project, you have to use it this way, right? 
Be, Makes perfect a sense. Guy. Chris, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Hey, great to be here. I was I just wanted to chim in. I'm really enjoying the conversation. It's great to uh, benefit from the experience of uh, you all uh, battle hardened veteran of this space. So uh, I'm really enjoying uh, listening uh, uh, to, to your, your prior culture and experiences here. Um, yeah, I wanted to interject on a few things um, uh, where, where we could have a, uh, an interesting conversation. So one of the things we're really focused on is helping make uh, science more reproducible. Because for us, that's one of the core, uh, uh, personally, as a scientist, it's one of the things that got me most disillusioned with science and uh, is the replication crisis. And I think I'm not alone uh, in that regard, right? So there's a, a, an, an epidemic of uh, irreproducibility and irreplicability in science. And I think what, what we need to strive to is, is creating the types of tools and the right incentive mechanisms that... Uh, essentially nudge or empower scientists to create more reproducible science and to do this easily, right? So that's also something which is uh, which has been a great challenge. Um, the, the difficulty I see with blockchain versus not blockchain, it's you don't want to advertise, let's say, a product with the underlying tech stack on which it's built, right? You have to like somehow provide a user-facing benefit that the user seamlessly experiences and appreciates as a feature without needing to know, hey, this is powered by IPFS, this is powered by blockchain, this is this, this is that, right? So you wanna, and I think this is this is the maturation process of all these technologies, right? We're, we're, we're seeking uh, uh, features that can be built that could not be built before that we could put our, at the forefront of these systems to uh, improve essentially the life of users, right? Because, uh, I mean, let's be real, scientists uh, um, have been, are, are subject to, to absolutely terrible user experience, right? I mean, uh, we've all tried to, to, to publish manuscripts on publishers' website. Uh, these are UIs that are out of, uh, out of the early 2000s. It's, uh, the, their, their whole technical backend is a, is, a, is a spaghetti mess of technical depth, and uh, the experience is, 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 is bad. Um, so, yeah, so, so I wanted to say, um, I'm, I'm kind of curious, what are... What are, from your experience uh, working on the uh, blockchain for science for so long, what have been uh, the main points where you can say here, by using this tech stack, we have an advantage. We have a special feature that improves your quality of life as scientists. That's one. And the other one is that improves the return of science to the public. So you mentioned type stamping, but I'm curious to hear more uh, um, in that direction from you guys. Yeah. So, okay, so I, I take it, okay? But so, first of all, the same, I, I totally agree with you. Like, blockchain is a, it's a terrible tame term. It's like a backend thing, and it's like, uh, there needs to be perfect user experience or very good user experience. At the same time, I think it's a right name and the correct thing, and blockchain is not only the backend thing. It was like sort of the Web3 naming it was a buzzword maybe that's why we are also here it could brought people together people like thought oh there's this bitcoin blockchain also i go to the blockchain for science conference if it would be a time standing for science conference or something nobody would have shown up right so and i want to like throw it back but i don't take it like bad in a, in a good way the same is with the term desi right it's a beautiful term it like it like harnesses on the successes of DeFi decentralized finance and everything at the same time like all science was already decentralized on many many levels right even we have like science is decentralized on a level of like locations on project on university of countries so it's not centralized right even old-fashioned science at the same time it's a very beautiful term and it's like but both terms bring things together that haven't been there in the past and it's like of rethinking value and value creation. Like blockchain is sort of like the value chain. And we have like we are rethinking incentives. The same with like DSI. People know that it's about DSI includes not only decentralization. Nobody really cares about decentralization of science, right? Like how on which on a technical level should it be decentralized? Should there be several servers or something like that? No, no, no. But people know that it's like, hey, this is a DAO thing. It's included in DSI and we have new value proposition, new incentive structures. So look, look into that and let's work on that. Right. So you kind of like, you kind of, okay. So you kind of like at the same time, like naming is always a 
a complex problem, right? So it is a complex, it's not only this naming. And I think like the term DeSci and the term blockchain sort of like it's like fading out. It's no longer good. I agree with you, DeSci. It's like at the moment, it's a really cool. It's a, people know what us, what bought us here. And it's like about redefining incentive structures and values, right? And this is like where we can really change the science world. And people, we don't care about whether it's like you have like decentralization or like really on like on which level it's decentralized, right? Yeah, Zonka, to pick up on that, like the, the the some of the best responses I've ever gotten over the years here, and I was not involved in blockchain for science, and I didn't go to this conference that you guys set up in like 2018, but it, it is around what Zonka's talking about, though, redefining the incentive structures. So a lot of people who stick around are like, oh, you're using this buzzword blockchain, or now you're using exactly, this buzzword yeah. ESI. Uh, but, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, but hold on. Let me tell you what that means. We're going to change the way we incentivize science production. If you're incentivized to publish, 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 publish or die, we can change that. We can free you from that system that you might be getting disillusioned with, or you might get getting tired of. Cool. And a lot of people, if you, you just need to find what that individual person you're talking to relates to in terms of what part of the scientific system scientific stack they don't like right now because there's so many yeah. different aspects that they might not like go ahead Martin. maybe to chris's uh, the other point you know that uh, so you picked on the names uh, there was this point about you, you challenged like what in our experience was a uh, something that changed the life of the scientists and and um and the the yeah, honest exactly. answer is What's the, yeah, yeah, what's the, the what's yeah. the user facing feature yeah. that really so, you know if, okay so the early experiments the obvious ones that you start and we've seen this is like okay so we build a new interface for publishing and then someone can connect things and upload data and 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 and, and all of this this is this is like a ui thing and we we might think that might be it but i uh, and we've seen this and, and you want to build and build and build so you start with that but what i think among the and more recent developments that really could change is really when we focus on the funding and the experience that researchers have around funding again we come to incentives here right and that is yeah. if you have these DAOs and these institutions and organizations they need to reinvent the way that we are distributing the the money um in a way that is uh, less burdensome for the scientists and the scientists, uh, you know, don't have to spend 60% uh, of the time writing the grants, but this needs to be, as Zunke mentioned before, like a single page, a web page, an updatable thing. And then you have these maybe really uh, uh, the, uh, the impact certificates and other mechanisms, but as simple as Gitcoin yeah. grants to to come to a, a very discreet example, Gitcoin grant is a one pager that can be updated over time. And that can be actually a quite rich source of information if people are doing this nicely. And, and then you have these recurring grant rounds. And if you, if you, we might need to improve that and make it more like that people actually really do something between the rounds. But, but that's a recurring system where people can receive funding and, and keep continue working on the same thing. So m what I'd suggest is we need more of that. And, and it, it doesn't have to be complicated, you know? Yeah. And the I mean, I'm a, yep. you know, personally, I'm, a, um, I, I, I'm also in this space, you know, con as, a, as an economist myself and thinking a lot about uh, the incentives in science and how to, to create better funding opportunities. But, you know, on the, on the product side, mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at other communities that work without fundings that create incredible uh, achievements of scientific uh, um, uh, excellence, right? So I'm looking typically at, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Hugging Face. So Hugging mm -hmm. Face is, a, is a, a hub for the machine learning community, and it's absolutely amazing. And without any in extrinsic incentives, right, no grants, no systems of funding, no essentially, you know, I'm going to give you these explicit incentives to stir your behavior in a certain way, they've managed to create a culture of excellence where scientists compete to create the best transformer models that would attract the most uh, usage by their community and the, and the most uh, appreciation from that community, right? And that's, mm -hmm. a, that's an absolutely killer model, right? So the idea that you can bootstrap these systems of prestige that create, uh, that, that, that essentially 
pushes this community towards creating more and more uh, uh, interesting research objects that have higher and higher and higher capabilities. Uh, that for me is like really the, 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 the crowning achievement of yeah. uh, essentially, you know, ecosystem environment design. So taking that example in the machine learning community, going back and to, 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 to DSI, um, the question is how can we, uh, can we essentially find similar mechanisms that will trigger these self-reinforcing loops of excellence from scientists without resulting to the uh, necessary to the uh, extrinsic incentives, yeah, right? I see. Um, I'm, before I, you go, so Martin, just, I'm just going to jump in. We yeah. got like three, two or three minutes left. So, okay, okay, sorry, okay, then really quick, just quick. It's make science as exciting as following uh, these kind of calls uh, or the entire Ethereum space. The Ethereum development project was completely open. You can join all the calls. Everything is there, right? Everything is happening in the open. There's no secrecy. Uh, anyone can join if they want. Anyone can contribute anytime. And hugging face might be similar. That's, a, again, a cultural shift we need to do. And we have been stuck a bit with the incentives. That's true. That's because we are still thinking too much and changing the minds of the established scientists. Maybe we just have to wait for the new generation that, that will adopt these tools and make sure we have the funding for them too, you know, that we can help them, those that don't want to be in the academic professional science. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I completely agree with that. You know, my, my, my main point is just, you know, we have to think about a two-pronged approach, right? It's both, you know, you need the extrinsic incentives and we need to create environments that have self-reinforcing feedback loops that yeah, yeah, people, yeah. Um, you know, do so the I'm, right I'm gonna... thing. Yeah, I'm going to cut in here. Uh, Zonka, do you want to get the uh, last word in here? And then we'll go back to Zonka, or to, to Martin, and then we'll close out. But this has been insane. I'll do a closer. Go ahead, Zonka. <laughs> okay, just, just one thing is, like, I think it would be good if the whole design community would come together, like, work on something and write, like, guidelines, how scientists should, like, act. Uh, if they want to have like get research money out of the design community from the DAO and everything, we just like put our wishes into this list. Like be open, have micro publications, be like available and everything. Have like small grant applications. Don't spend work on overhead. Don't spend too much work on like writing reports. Your like publication trail is your report. Is your report and everything. Okay, this would be cool. And I think this is like the way how DSI could like really change something this time. Yeah, I really appreciate, really appreciate that, Martin. Um, and uh, yeah, we I've also seen that you had such a document that you were working on. I Chris, hold on, Chris, I'm going to have to cut you off because we do need to go. So Martin, if you want to get a, a close, you guys can stick around yeah. once the recording leaves, uh, but I, I have to cool. catch an airplane. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very awesome. much. Cool. We'll continue. No, thanks for my side. It was, was wonderful, uh, this conversation. We are open many cans. We have to go back in the recording and check it out. And, and just to mention, it's true, there is a document that Zünke and I started and uh, maybe we shared in the chat later. Um, it's kind of DSI guidelines. We had fun, especially writing the gray signs, <laughs> the, the way it's working today. Uh, um, but it will be very great to see people contribute to this. And um, yeah. Awesome. So guys, if you Hopefully. enjoy, like I enjoyed this discussion. I know everyone here who's been participating has loved this and we did open a lot of different boxes. So it would be fantastic if you guys could come back and join us for another discussion where we, we maybe find one of these specific culture shifts, incentives, actual products, UX, UI, standards, all these things are hour-long discussions in their own right. Uh, so I look forward to those discussions in the future. If everyone wants to talk with these guys on Telegram, the channel is Blockchains for Science. Uh, we'll get links for you in the chat and wherever this recording is posted, because this has been fantastic. We will post the recording. Uh, and that is basically it. We'll be doing another one of these talks. It probably won't be on DSI next week, Thursday at... 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, and Martin and Zonka, thank you for everything you guys have done for the, the blockchain for science space and for bringing scientists into this technology and this technology to scientists. And, and thank you for this really enjoyable discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. And thank you for inviting us.